and uh, for all of you and some other folks. And I got done praying, looked up, and realized that we weren't even on the air. <laughs> so you'll have to. You have to uh, forgive us for for that. And I thought it was a pretty good flowery prayer too. My goodness, all that praying, and y'all didn't even get to hear it. My goodness. But those that uh, we do pray for uh, Tim Jones, Lord. Uh, I pray that y'all pray for him. He's very very sick with the COVID uh, virus. And also uh, pray for my brother, Robert, Lord, uh, he's getting over what he's had and protect the rest of the family. So if you all would remember those in prayer and, and uh, also uh, Walter, his recovery and, and all our family members and friends. And we'll thank you for it. Amen. So if you would pray to the Lord, touch these people. I didn't know we weren't on, and I'm sitting here praying, and I look up, and here we were. We weren't on. So did everything work out all right for you, uh, Jasmine? Huh? Yeah, you bet. All right, let's play a song. Last one.
Amen. All right. He's God. He's not changed. All right, girls. We're ready. Good evening, everybody. Whoops. Good evening. I have a flying nun here. <laughs> Trying to get it down. But anyway. Yeah. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him I own I see. All I need to mend and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care I need to roll. Hallelujah, he's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my griefs has taken, and all my sorrows torn. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tub. I have all for him forsaken, and all my idols torn. From my heart and now he keeps me by his tub. Though all the world forsake me, and Satan tempt me so, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. Hallelujah, he's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith in you, his blessed will. Oh, all of fire about me, I have nothing now to fear. With his manna, him my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory, I see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. Hallelujah, he's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Amen, all right. All right, we're probably, uh, tonight we're going to, Look at the 14 major doctrines of the Word of God. And, of course, again, uh, doctrine is just simply a teaching, so a teaching from the Word of God. But I, I, I wish you'd pray tonight for a couple people. But, uh, man, I, I had to go by and look at a piece of equipment tonight down there by Wagner, South Carolina. And, and uh, I met the guy once before. And we got to talking. He's 64 years old. He had a, a stint put in two years ago. And uh, he had two 50% blockages and 80% blockage. And anyway, uh, he was telling me, he said he lived around the corner there on 80 acres. And I asked him, what about this house right here? He said, oh, that was my son's there. He died there, 39 years old. From drinking and I said that must bother you every time you go by there or every time he says yeah since my shop is right next to it uh, yeah it does anyway the conversation I finally got the conversation around to asking him about his soul and uh, talking to him and he says well I'm not an atheist but I'm an agnostic he says I believe there's something out there and I believe there's been miracles he says but I, I'll tell you what you you know they say you won't find an atheist in a foxhole and he says i'll tell you we're another place you won't find an atheist that's on an operating table and he said uh when he was on the operating table he was praying but he, he was praying to something but he didn't know who or what and i said you know you can you can be an agnostic and you can believe that there's a, a higher power uh, and all that i says but unless you believe that he is who he says he is i said you're gonna die in your sin and go to hell and uh, God's not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. He has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And he's 64 years old, but uh, four years younger than me, but uh, looks a lot older. Of course, you know, I maintain mine. You know, yeah, I'm joking. But anyway, uh, could, uh Excuse me, I was going to say, would you excuse me for a moment while I sneeze, but I didn't have time to say that. I just had to sneeze. 
but uh, anyway, uh, he said that he used to go, he grew up in a Baptist church. He was when he was 17, his dad died, and then his mom died of cancer. And uh, by the time he was 20, he was they took the house after the mother died, and he was out in the streets. And and anyway, uh, he came a long way. But anyway, the uh, the fella. I mean, he's a real nice guy. And in between his cuss words, I got to preach to him. And uh, he's, uh, like I said, a nice fellow. But I told him I, when I left, I said, you need to think about what I said to you. And I'm praying that God will work on him. I've got to go back down there to work on that machine uh, next week. And, and uh, I just pray that you would pray that God would soften his heart up amen but you can believe that there's a god out there somewhere but you've got to believe that jesus christ is god amen and you've got to be willing to repent turn from your sin and turn unto god through jesus christ in order to be saved i don't care if, uh we preached not long ago about thou believest in one god thou doest well he said the devils also believe and they tremble uh just saying I believe in God is not going to get you to heaven. A lot of people have a belief of God in their in their head. They have a head knowledge. And they miss heaven by about 18 inches. He said, if thou shalt believe in thine heart. Amen. Believe in thine heart. You've got to believe from the heart. And to believe from the heart means you're going to, things are going to change. And uh, some people don't want to change. They just, I said this to the church a few times and said it just about a week or so ago. It's not that people want to go to heaven. They just don't want to go to hell. So they want, they're looking for a fire escape. You can be sitting in church on your way to hell. You can be religious all your life and die and go to hell. Uh, religion's not going to save you. You need the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the Bible, the Bible says in uh, 2 Timothy, we'll go there real quick. 2 Timothy, in chapter 3, well, let me back up here. 2 Timothy, and we'll look at chapter 3 and verse 16. The Bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So he says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. He didn't say all Bibles or all books. He said all scripture. We're talking about the King James Bible here. But you can be one of those that Believe in the King James Bible, carry one to church, go to an independent Baptist church and die in your sin and go to hell because you've never repented of your sin and truly trusted the Lord Jesus Christ from the from your heart. Amen. Now, Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, he said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. He said, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering." And doctrine, he says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. He tells Timothy, young Timothy, uh, he says, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Paul says, for I'm now ready to be offered in the time of my departures at hand. Paul says that, he says, I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Amen. Uh, Paul says, I've fought a good fight. How many Christians today are really fighting a good fight? Most of them aren't. They 
come to church and it's like somebody said last week to me, uh, to them it's just a club. They come, spend an hour or two a week, amen, throw some money in the offering plate, go home and do their own thing again. Doing nothing to further the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, doing nothing to win souls. And again, the Bible says, he that win his souls is wise. So there's, we don't have too many wise people in the church anymore. We're not seeing souls saved. Uh, people are afraid to speak up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, even this evening when I was down there talking to this man, uh, he's letting the words fly. And, and I realized from what I said last night, you know, I, I cursed like a, well, like a Marine. <laughs> You used to say like a sailor, but the Marines were part of the Navy, right? Anyway, uh, I used to curse like that and never realized I did. So I didn't get down to the man about his cursing tonight, but I did talk to him about his soul. And I asked him a question, one that I asked everybody, and I've asked it around the world, wherever I've been in the world. I've asked this same question, and you've heard me say it before, and you'll hear me say it now again. Uh you know, have you ever walked through a, a meadow in the spring and along a river or a creek? And, and he was telling me, yeah. And I said, I don't want you to answer me, but I'm going to answer for you. I said, I want you to tell me how you felt. But I really don't want you to tell me. I'm going to tell you how you felt. And uh, I said, you felt like you just kind of took a deep breath and said, I could live here the rest of my life. He looked at me and he said, yeah. And I asked him again. I said, you know why? You said you came up in a Baptist church when you were young, but all the things you went through and all, you became an agnostic. You got tired of the hypocrites and all. And uh, he said, yeah. I said, well, if you had any religious background at all in a Baptist church, where did uh, where did man start? Well, he started in the garden. And I said, so when you see these beautiful flowers or that beautiful rolling hill meadow or uh, you see these things inside, there's a something comes up within you and you say, oh, man, I could live here the rest of my life. You know why that is? Because man started in the garden. And subconsciously what they don't realize is they're trying to get back to that garden, but it's not the garden. It's the God of the garden. What they lost in Adam, this is why Titus, uh, in the book of Titus, the Bible tells us that uh, we need regenerated. In the book of Titus, what happened was, let me read you the verse. He says, but after that, the kindness of love and love of God, our Savior, appeared toward men, toward man appeared. He says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Well, when did man ever have the Holy Ghost? He had it in Adam in the garden. And Adam would fellowship with God, commune with God. But when he sinned, the Lord told him, he said, in the day that thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. And we know he lived to be 930 years old, according to the scripture. But that day he died spiritually. Amen. What happened was that the Holy Ghost that was in him, we lost. And that's why the Bible says you must be born again. And when you get born again, it's not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And that word regeneration, another thing to get into one night. But anyway, I said, what happens to man is he's got this big empty hole right here. And he tries to fill it with everything the world has to offer. Sex and money and careers and cars and uh whatever i mean whatever they're seeking after they're trying to fill that void in their life and i said where did man start in the garden 
What did he have in the garden? He had fellowship with God. And so you see, it's not the garden that they really want to get back to. They want to get back to God and they don't know how. That's why God said he chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. Amen. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us is the power of God and salvation. And so man subconsciously is trying to get that relationship back that they lost in Adam. But what I tell them is this, it's not the garden. It's the God of the garden is what you're looking for. Man is uh, just religious by nature. He worships uh, uh, a rabbit's foot. You know, I told somebody one time, they said, oh, it's my lucky rabbit's foot. And I said, well, it wasn't so lucky for the rabbit. There's a three-legged rabbit running around somewhere. Uh, I... I remember my sister and I, Ruth, my older sister, we used to have troll dolls. And I remember I had a little purple troll doll with the gray hair. And, and uh, we kind of use that as a good luck tar charm or talk to it. Amen. We're going to worship something. You might worship your car. You might worship your job. You might worship, hey, you can be worshiping, worshiping politics. Amen. Uh, whatever it is that, takes the preeminence in your life other than God. And so man, he has to worship something. And that's because God made him to fellowship with him and to worship him and to worship with him. And man lost that in the garden, but we get it back through the Lord Jesus Christ when we're willing to take our place as hell deserving sinners. And we're willing to turn from our sin and turn unto God through Jesus Christ. Now, in getting to that point, there's 14 major doctrines in the word of God. One of them is the depravity of man. Man is totally depraved. Uh, the thoughts and intents of man's heart was only evil continually, it says over in Genesis. And, and then there has to be grace. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, the gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. Uh, God extends his grace, and so that's a teaching there that we have teaching of depravity, teaching of grace, and then regeneration. What does it mean to be regenerated, as Titus, uh, Paul said in Titus chapter 3? Regeneration. Well, why do we need regenerated? Because the generation we came out of is wicked and vile. So we get regenerated. We get into a generation uh, that we had in Adam in the garden before he fell. And then there's the doctrine of imputation. Our sins being imputed unto God, unto Jesus Christ, amen? And him taking our place. And that leads us into the doctrine of substitution. Uh, you know, if, if I was on death row and a penalty had to be paid for the person that I killed, uh, and you come along and you say, listen, don't kill him. Let me take his place. Well, you're going to have to go die for me. That's called substitution. You substituted yourself for me and let me go free. Then there's repentance. Repentance is a change of mind that leads to a change of life. You can be right now as lost people, you'd be walking away from God. Repentance is realizing, according to the scripture, exactly what you are. And that you're a sinner and that you can't save yourself. And you're willing to do a 180. You turn towards God. That's repentance. Then the doctrine of reconciliation. Being reconciled to the family of God. Amen. Then the. Ninth one is propitiation. Propitiation. Where we go to get this forgiveness. And our propitiation is in Jesus Christ. Then, number 10, we're justified. We're doctrine of justification. We're justified. How? Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I've told this story many times. I remember when we had an eclipse. And... 
It was about 11 o'clock one January night. And I walked out on the back deck of my house. And I looked up into the sky. And the moon was kind of a dullish yellow white. And as it was being eclipsed, it completely got blood red. Blood red. The Bible says that day on the day. I'm sorry, I missed that verse. Oh, I was talking about day on the day, utter their speech. What? About salvation. Uh, the church is typed as a moon. Uh, Israel is typed as a moon. And Jesus Christ is the S-U-N, son of righteousness. And when that sun eclipsed the moon, as it went by, it turned blood red. And within an hour, when it got on the other side of the moon, that moon was the whitest, the whitest I'd ever seen. You know what's a picture of? The heavens declare his glory. The heavens preach the gospel. What that's a picture of is the blood of Jesus Christ who washed away our sin and the sin of the church. Amen. Amen. Then there's, that's our justification. It's in him. Then number 11 is sanctification. Sanctified and meet for the master's use. That's set apart unto God. To get the world out, to get the ungodliness out and get the word of God in. And because of our justification and our sanctification, and we've been to the one who is our propitiation, now we have security. The Bible says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into the body of Christ. He said, we are sealed until the day of redemption by that Holy Spirit of promise. We have a bunch of other verses here. Uh, Titus chapter 3 and verse 1, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates and be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. And again, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. He says, these things are good and profitable unto men. And then there's predestination. That's a word that has been perverted by the Calvinists. But predestination, it's predetermined that we're going to be conformed to the image of Christ. That's after you're saved, not to get you into the body, because, but because you're already in the body. And all of this was made possible by number 14 on the major doctrines, and that is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he lives, I live. Because he lives, the old song says, I can face tomorrow. Our country's in sad shape right now. I hate to say it, but we have an idiot in Washington. Actually, we have more than one idiot. What we've got is a bunch of devils that have taken over the government of these United States. And we also have some on the Republican side. We have some two-faced, well, actually they call them turtle face. Two-Faced Turtle Face, amen, Mitch McConnell. You know one thing about the Democrats? They stick together. 
They never backed off nothing. They stayed right together all through the four years of President Trump. But as soon as President Trump went out, our swamp rats on our side started bailing and trying to get in with good graces with those that are in power. But you know what? That ain't going to work. But you just showed what you really are. We need to get rid of them. I'd like to see a third party, but that's not what I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about the word of God. But as bad a shape as this country's in and the ones that are in power, I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. So I'm not worried about it. I don't like it, but I'm not worried about it. I've got a savior that's in control. I was going to speak tonight a little bit on how God judges the nation. And during the time of our last president with all of our, all of our uh, prosperity that he brought, people forgot God. So maybe he gave us something that's going to bring us back to God because it's going to get rough. Amen. You need to know whom you believe. You need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. The most important thing you can do with the time you have left in this old earth is try to win souls and bring people into the kingdom of God for the Lord Jesus Christ because of what he's done for us. Amen. All right, I'm done. Let's pray. Grace, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this evening. We thank you for the folks that have joined in. We pray you bless each and every one of them according to your perfect will. And Lord, watch us over us all tonight. Give us a good weekend, a good service in church on Sunday. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right. Who loves you, baby? Me. Jesus. Amen. Y'all have a good evening. All right.